Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Hello there, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. The title of today's Bible study video is, What Kind of Things Should Christians Pray For? Now, the good Lord put this upon my heart this morning, and I feel it's of the utmost importance. So I was excited. I came down and started getting the scriptures together. And now, without further ado, we're going to dive into this. What kind of things should Christians pray for? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us a model prayer covering important things that we should pray for. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, Jesus speaking to his disciples and us, he said, after this manner, therefore pray ye. He said, this is the way you pray, because they asked the Lord to teach them how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, acknowledge God Almighty in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. Let your name be sanctified, in other words. Set aside in righteousness and cleared of all reproach. That's what he means when he says, Hallowed be your name. Ten, thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come. So we should be praying for God's kingdom to come, which is a real government that's going to take control of all these governments on this planet, and Christ Jesus is going to be the ruler of that government. Then he says, Thy will be done in earth, or it should be on earth as it is in heaven. So we should be praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. 11. Give us this day our daily bread, praying God for the food and the water that he provides every day. 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is very important. We ask God to forgive us of our sins because we sin every single day. As we forgive those who have sinned against us. Very important. Because if we don't forgive the people who sinned against us, God is not going to forgive us. 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. So we pray to God not to allow us to be tempted beyond anything that we can handle. We want to avoid it altogether because we're no competition for Satan. So we pray for that. And God is going to do that anyway because he says he'll never let the enemy tempt us above something we can handle. Remember, we're here to be tested. Then he ends the prayer for thine or for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So that's a general prayer that Christ taught us that we should pray because those things are very important. But those aren't the only things we should pray for. The Bible tells us in James 5.16, confess your faults one to another, be real with each other, and pray one for another. We should confess our faults to each other because if we do that, then our brother and our sister can know exactly what to pray for us and we can know exactly what to pray for them. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye or you may be healed. 
the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much also a righteous woman. So it's very important that we pray for each other. This is the will of God. There will be times when you are pleasing in the Lord's sight and the Lord ears are open wide to your prayer and you can intercede for another person and vice versa. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul wrote there, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, that means requests, prayers, intercessions, that's when you're praying for someone, you're standing in the gap and praying for someone else, and giving of thanks be made for all men, he says. Verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So the apostle is teaching us that we should even pray for our world leaders, even the ones who are not righteous leaders, because God can cause them to do right by us so we can live a peaceful life. So he says we should pray for those in authority for that reason. Okay. This is what God put upon my heart this morning that I feel is of the utmost importance. All of it from the book of Psalms, which for the most part, King David or David in the Hebrew tongue was used by God to write. And he was a man after God's own heart. He constantly prayed to God. He was dedicated to God. Even though he fell short, he was a man after God's heart, the Bible tells us. So, first of all, here let me lay down the principle found here in Psalms 145, verse 18 and 19. This is important. This is why prayer is important. The Lord is nigh, which means near, to them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. So God is near to those who are constantly communicating with him and being honest with him, not coming trying to fool him or no foolishness like that. Verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, those that reverence him. In other words, he also will hear their cry and will save them. That's why prayer is so very important. Now, God gave me these verses from Psalms, and I think we should just take them and put them all together and pray this prayer every day, even though they're separate prayers, but we can combine them. This is something that we all need to pray for every single day. So the first one I have is Psalms 143, verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. Teach me to do your will. Thou art my God. You are my God. Thy spirit is good. Your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Now, that is very important because the Holy Spirit of God is the one who teaches us. Even though he works through people and situations and things, it's still coming from God Almighty. So we need to pray every day this part. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. That means living the way God wants you to live. Then Psalms 51 verse 10, I got, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now that's very important because our heart is wicked to the core. Jeremiah chapter 17, 19 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's the fallen humanity of man that was brought upon us from our foreparents, Adam and Eve. So we need to ask God to create in us a clean heart, a clean mind, and to renew a right spirit, a right mental disposition within us. We need to pray that every day, all day. Only God can do it. Then Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So we should 
constantly be asking God to examine us and to correct us. That's right. Every day we should be praying this. And then last, Psalms 19.13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. We need to ask God for that help because our biggest struggle, in my opinion, is not Satan. It's not the people he controls in the world. It's the law of sin dwelling in our members. So we need God to help us keep that in check. And he does if we ask him because his spirit is inside of every last one of us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. So the Lord gave me that. And I think it's very important that we take this and we pray it every day and we mean it. So I'm going to just pray it all together and we're going to wrap this up. I'm combining Psalms 143.10. Psalms 5110, Psalms 139, 23, and 24, and Psalms 19, verse 13. All of these things that King David prayed at different times in his life. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I ask that you hear my prayer. Amen. Always make sure you pray in the name of Jesus, because that's exactly how the Lord tells us we're supposed to do it. Our prayers we can direct directly to the Father, but they have to be in the name of Jesus, because he's the mediator between God and man. You can also pray directly to Jesus Christ because he is part of the Godhead. He is your God too. So you'll have examples in the Bible where people pray directly to Jesus Christ. When Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was dying for Christ, he prayed to Jesus and he asked Jesus to forgive them for killing him. So I hope and pray that you take this prayer and you make it your own. This is, this is what I'm going to do because it is of the utmost importance that we ask God to create in us a clean heart and to lead us in the way everlasting because without holiness, none of us are going to see God. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, 
share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me martinaaronporter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.